Okay, just experiencing some technical difficulties. Not the margarita kind, but um, not it. No doubt there are a lot of people going, where is my damn sailing into freedom uh, weekly fix? It didn't come out during the day and no doubt people are going to comment. Come on, Plucky. Well, we had some problems. But without further ado, woohoo! Oh, I can't see anything. Oh, look. Oh, look. Can anyone see anything? We got something. Ah, here we go. G'day, people. Uh, sorry about your lack of uh, video fix at midday today or whenever it's supposed to be released. I have had some technical issues um, with the Adobe program. Uh, you don't, you don't want to know. It's uh, a nightmare. Uh, and I lost some footage and then I found it and then I had problems with the Adobe again. But anyway, without further ado, I see there's lots of 138 people. I was expecting 38 people because, yes, sadly, it's just me today. I've got my cheat sheets here, um, and we'll just go through a bit of a ramble about cats versus monohull because I own one of each. Now, just because I own one of each doesn't mean I'm an expert. I just have two cents worth to give. Uh, you ought to do some your own research and get yourself, get your asses on a mono and a cat yourself and work out what you like, um, what's best. Anyway. Um, well, I should read some of these. Uh, okay, anyway, look, I'll, I'll get onto this. I'll try and read some of your comments at the same time, but you do understand that I am a guy and I can't do two things at once. Margarita can do about seven things at once. I cannot do that. So I'll, I will try. Um, for starters, uh, I wanted to test out, I want to do this by myself because I wanted to test out, uh, I think in the last live stream I mentioned that the ratio of viewers wanting to watch me to Margarita out of 1,000 was 1 to 999. And yes, I was pretty well correct. There was a guy from Syracuse, New York, sorry buddy, I forgot your name, but he wrote in and he said, I'm the guy that wanted to see you, Plucky. So it wasn't quite 1 to 999. It was more like one to eleven hundred, so it was a bit worse, but that's okay. I don't have a killer smile like Margarita. Uh, anyway, I should also say that yes, it's one to eleven hundred, but I do have two Berlin followers. Hello, Berlin followers, but they sort of appreciate me in ways that probably ought not to be mentioned. Uh, but anyway, hello nonetheless. I cannot afford to throw away any subscribers or anyone watching because, well, we had some tough times of late, but we seem to be uh, going okay. It's, isn't it ironic that it took the coronavirus, and I'm sorry that it's killing people and affecting people, but it took the coronavirus channel to finally become a little bit popular. I expect it to fall back to <laughs> what it was after the series, but... We can ride this little wave for a little while yet. Um, okay, so first of all, I'd like to say something about boats generally. Number one, everyone that's watching this and all the other sailing channels, no doubt is interested in being on a boat and living on a boat. And yes, you ought to be because your life goes up dramatically. Um, just think of it, in the morning you wake up, you see the sunrise, it's beautiful, you get fresh salty air, it's calming, you don't have any television, all of that rubbish. It's, it's just wonderful. So you probably live longer just by living on a boat. Um, so my advice is you should get one. Now, oh yeah, here's a bit about uh, a little anecdote about me. Now, 
being uh, in Sydney, when I lived in Sydney for quite a while, I used to drive a 24-year-old red, well, I shouldn't say red, it was more like rust red, sort of the paint was sort of falling off. 24-year-old laser station wagon. And do you think I could get a date with a car like that in Sydney? No, people, you cannot. But I got a boat, and then all of a sudden, people wanted to go sailing. So, you know, there's a lesson in that for all of us. Okay, so what else have we got here? Um, oh, yeah, now, this does not apply to you, Patrick Leclerc. Hi, Patrick, I saw your message there. You have a wonderful wife, and I am very happy for you. Um, and there are probably some others that are very happily married. But the sad thing is, if you're a sailor, if you're a, a husband and wife, and you've got this idea, you want to buy a boat, fix it up, and sail away, and rah, 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 you must be an exceptional couple. And in fact, the, the woman has to be an exceptional female to sort of share that dream and want to do that. Because, unfortunately, and I've seen this lots of times and I've read lots of things about it, unfortunately, what happens is when the, the dream aspects are disproportionate. The girl goes, yeah, that beach looks good. I could do that for two weeks a year. And the guy goes, oh, I want to do that all the time. I'm going to go fishing. And I'm going to have a six-pack in the fridge. And I'm going to, if you have a fridge... And I'm going to be fishing. It's going to be awesome. So the dreams are a bit different. So and what happens is the guy or the couple buys the boat and then he spends all this effort and time and stuff to the point that the boat actually becomes a mistress. But it's not a mistress that your wife can deal with because she can't scratch the eyes out of the boat. She can't, you know... Uh, get on Instagram and say, look at this slut. Sorry, I shouldn't use these words, but she can't do that. She can't attack a boat. I mean, she could get get to it with an axe or a machete, but it's just going to dint the paint a bit. And, you know, it's not going to really damage it. She can't compete. So even though you're doing it for the both of you, making it safer, making it cleaner, making it nicer, making it more uh, of a home, she won't see it like that unless she's an exceptional Email. It happened to me, and so what happens is you end up getting separated, and then suddenly the boat that she didn't want to have anything to do with, if you go to court or whatever, that's probably the first thing that she wants to get in the settlement, just to give it to you. So it's a sad thing. So remember, you got to take my blog as a bit of a lighter side of life. Uh, I think some of the people that watch my blog might... Take it a bit seriously. But, so there's a lighter side of this, but what I would suggest is if you aren't 100% sure that your wife uh, shares the dream exactly the way you do, it's going to probably end in disaster. So you ought to get divorced first, and then get the boat, and then get your girl after that. Because then, well, she can't say anything then because you already had a boat. See, there you go. Always thinking, plucky. Anyway, I'm just trying to give you what happened to me so basically i ended up with a boat and no money and um it was sort of a bit of a bummer anyway uh, and then i lost the cat oh my goodness um hold on, we just have a quick look at this all right people are still commenting okay people still there 196 i thought we were only going to get 38 people okay so we're going to start now so that's a bit of an intro get a boat uh and your life will improve okay now, how do you start? So this is still not in the cat mono thing because I wanted to give you an introduction. So just bear with me. So how do you start? Well, I don't know about other countries, but in uh, Sydney, Australia, towards summer, uh, you have twilight races sometimes every night of the week, but usually Thursday and Friday because there's lots of daylight still. So you knock off work and you ask around, you go to the sailing club and whatever, and you get on some boats. And when you get on boats, you get to understand, oh, I like that boat, and I like that boat. Oh, I don't like that boat. I don't like that captain. Oh, the captain's a bit of an issue. Because in Twilight Races, it's racing. And to me, sailing and racing are two completely different things, uh, and it can be quite stressful. But you get to see what you like, and you can get on catamarans and, you know, turn up with a case of beer 
and be friendly and then you know you might find out that the catamaran guy is anti-fouling his boat on saturday and you say i'll come around and help and you get to get in with the boating crowd and then when you get in with the boating crowd he'll say oh this uh robert well plucky this plucky he's a good bloke have him fooled um i was going to go up to port stevens and i need someone to help me sail overnight maybe plucky can join me and of course i would and so this is what happens and so you get to get an idea um for example what a catamaran would feel like you know out at sea because when you're in the bay it's not really it's not really testing it for you so this happens and then when you have a few of those up your sleeve well then someone might be going up the east coast and he does his wife for example doesn't want to sail all the way up to the great barrier reef so he needs someone for a week and then his wife will go up my plane and pick her up and so then you've got a week run and this it builds and builds on that and then once you have a bit of knowledge that way you can get on big passages and then bob's your uncle you'll work out well i'm a monohull man or oh, i'm a catamaran man so that's one way of starting okay and it's the cheapest way it'll only cost you a few cartons of beer and you just have to be nice helpful donate some of your time and people will start thinking you're okay and you will go places so there you go um all right what do we got i'm i'm reading at the moment sorry people okay so now we're down to cat versus mono hull now uh, please people if you're reading uh, mono mono all day long okay uh seward um please be polite to each other on the the chat thing because look if anyone has seen the rather uh tiger-like debates when people argue about monos versus catamarans safety speed ra 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 whatever it can be get a bit nasty and personal so let's not have that um to each their own horses for courses so let's just sort of try and um, accept other people's opinions as well uh remember this is all my opinion and i don't have much of an opinion because i've only had one of each so bear that in mind so uh cat versus monohull okay for starters now no doubt um, most of the people watching all of these vlogs you don't have a lot of money okay i mean most people don't have a lot of money to spend so if money is an issue it's pretty obvious uh it's going to have to be a monohull because if you buy a catamaran with such little money it's going to be full of rot it'll be a plywood catamaran the bulkheads will all be rotten uh they'll be all soaked up so it's going to be a nightmare don't do it get a monohull so please if money is an issue it's it's a foregone conclusion here's another thing um a lot of people then go okay i want this boat and it's big and it's lovely and it's it's we're still talking about monohulls by the way it's big and it's lovely and um but it's going to take me eight years to save up to buy it well here's my suggestion go smaller and go now now i didn't invent that uh, saying i've heard it somewhere else so you know congratulate that person uh but there's an element of truth in it okay um well there's a big element of truth in it instead of wasting eight years and because look when you're in society and you have to earn one dollar to buy that boat you probably have to earn three times that amount just to live in society to get that dollar to get that boat so it'd be better to get on a smaller boat and just to throw out all that other rubbish so go smaller and go now another issue is you might find and this has happened a lot i've seen it a lot uh people are retiring and they go oh, i've got their dream and they get a nice catamaran and and they're 55 or 65 somewhere in that range but they're scared and they don't enjoy it they're scared and they spend a lot of the time in marinas or in very very safe anchorages and um, they can't really enjoy it because they put themselves in a situation where they're at the level of scaredness they can't actually get out of it whereas if you're say 45 and you're still a bit rambunctious um oh connection went 
Are you still watching? Anyway, and you're a bit rambunctious. You can get the necessary experience to then not get scared. And then even when you are 55, you're not in that scared region anymore and you're good to go. So watch that one because I have seen it and um, yeah, well, they end up having a broken dream and they don't do anything and they end up selling it at a great loss and they're disappointed and they probably, I don't know what happens afterwards, but they probably die soon afterwards because what else is there to live with? They had this dream for so long and then it happened. So um, that happened. So uh, go smaller, go now. All right. Now, what else? Uh, so we don't want the perfect boat. Um, oh, yeah. Now, I tried to do some research today on it, but, uh, or yesterday and today. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure, but I know 10 years ago, people. Now, some people are going, yeah, but I don't even have, you know, $2,000 to buy a boat or $5,000 or $500 to buy a boat. How the hell am I going to get a boat? Well, 10 years ago, I knew for a fact that in Langkawi in Malaysia, um, they were towing multiple boats, all, you know, nose to tail, nose to tail, nose to tail, out to sea and scuttling them because they were filling up the uh, hard stand yards because people had done their dream trip around the world and they've left them on the hard and they paid for the first couple of years of hard stand and then they sort of forgot about their boat and then they stopped paying. And so then these yards ended up having all of these boats that were getting worse and they're all mouldy and, and, you know, they've got issues. They're towing them out to sea. But, you know, you can do a deal. Go there. I'm not quite sure if you can ring them up. It might be a thing where you uh, have to get... If you know a friend in Langkawi, that's probably a long shot, but you might actually have to fly there. But it used to be good 10 years ago. But do your own research and you might find that they're giving away boats for a dollar. They're not big boats and they've got issues, but it doesn't matter. You're going to have a boat and you're in Asia, so you'll be able to repair it quite cheaply. So that's 10-year-old information. It might still apply because generally that's the end of the the dream cruising of the world and the, the boats end up there. So that's a bit of a 10 year old tip. Um, okay, I'm sure there are places, for example, this is a guess because Venezuela is going through so much, uh, so many problems. They've probably got hard stands there and marinas there, the uh, boats have been abandoned. All you have to do is go see the marina manager, case of beer, a hundred bucks or whatever. If he's not earning any money from it, and it's just sitting there for seven years, what's he going to do? Anyway, uh, Patrick Leclerc, great advice. We were buying new and now we are going used with a fifth. Yes. Well, anyway, good on you, Patrick. Remember, I did say that the divorce thing didn't apply to you, but everyone else pay attention to it because it will be a nightmare. Did you hear about that guy who did buy a boat and had a dream with, I think it was in the UK, um, and he spent a lot of time making the boat beautiful for him and his wife. Uh, she regarded it as a mistress, got pissed off with him, divorced him, and the first thing she wanted in the settlement, settlement was the boat, even though she wanted nothing to do with it, just to stick it to him. And the settlement gave her the boat. Yes, good on you judges, always using common sense. And um, he said, no, nah, I'm not having anything to do with this. He went to the, the marina with a sledgehammer or an ax and he put a hole in it and he sank it. And of course, he went to jail. Oh, how fair the world is. I don't condone sort of doing that, but I can understand how he feels. Um, all right, that's the advice about Langkawi. Um, oh yeah, so on a smaller boat, you can still have lots of fun. I mean, our boat's uh, 42, so it's not a small boat, but it's actually a small volume boat inside it. Very difficult for more than two people to live. Uh, there's very little volume. My friend's 35 foot boat had more volume than our boat. And, uh, but that's, I'm not complaining, it's just the boat, um, just the way it is. The good thing about it is it does sail really well in light wind. So, and yes, I am starting to like my boat. It was very difficult. Well, I shouldn't say I'm starting to like my boat. I do like my boat now. I don't think it's the love affair I had with the uh, catamaran, but uh, it was very difficult, the transition uh, and all the effort because I put in 
oh, so much effort and time and money. But this boat is a good boat. It's got a lot of warts, but hey, at least I got a boat. And you can have a boat too. Go to Lankawi, check out Venezuela. Venezuela is just a guess, by the way, but do some research. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah. Now, I was once on a catamaran, right? And um, this was before I bought the catamaran because that's another thing you do. If, if you've got this dream of owning a boat, get a picture of it and stick it on your desk. Put it behind the toilet uh, door. Put it on the other side of the shower, uh, the, the glass shower screen. It's always there to remind you, okay? Um, when I was, I was out spearfishing on, on a tiny little island in the Great Barrier Reef, and there was a nice catamaran there, I thought, I'll go ask if I can have a look and get an idea. Well, I was in a rubber ducky, so my feet were a little bit wet, and I jumped on board. This boat was immaculate. It was a museum. The woman, they are lovely people. But as I walked through, she had a little mop. And she was wiping up the footprints. Yes, there was a little bit of moisture. There was I wasn't dripping wet, but it was moist. She was following me that to get rid of the footprints. That's not living people. That's a museum. If you'd have that situation, you're never going to enjoy the boat because, boy, you're going to have difficulty getting in the marinas, you know, going up to old rusty uh, concrete docks with pins sticking out and stuff, you will be anxious all the time. I would suggest that that's not a good way. And because most people um, are having troubles uh, with money, uh, I'm sure watching these channels, uh, as, as am I, um, just, um, yeah, go cheaper. And, and regard it as more of a practical boat. You know, it's, uh, it's a working boat. If it gets a scratch, well, you pay, put a bit of paint on it anyway. That's the way I see it. Uh, okay. We're already through half the discussions, people. People are going, oh, thank God, this is the most boring live stream ever. Where's Margarita? Why isn't Margarita smiling? You go try and smile. Yeah, it doesn't work, does it? Um, okay, we've got here. Oh, Calvin, someone gave me money. Oh, by the way, I have cheapened myself, and some people suggested to put a donate thing. I'm saying don't donate. I put it just so, look, people are always going to donate. But as I said before, we're okay. Uh, a lot of you guys, people uh, out there, uh, you're having problems. So look after your own problems. We're doing good. We're in a hotel. We don't have to pay anything. I have to clean the pool. Uh, and that's about it. So we're good. Okay. Um, now, very, very, very important uh, to people uh, watching this channel because, um, well, watching the discussions about boats because no doubt you probably haven't, some haven't sailed before and you, you're a bit scared because why wouldn't you be scared? Because, you know, the ocean's big and there's waves and there's rocks and, you know, it's, it can be scary. But if you are scared and you're inexperienced and there's a safety issue, just go monohull because I'm going to let you in on a wonderful thing that monohulls have. It is absolutely wonderful. Monohulls lean. You can be going along and you can be a bit like me, dreaming away, not really paying attention, and you can get hit by a squall. Not all squalls. If it's a 100-knot squall and you get bowled over, you will definitely get knocked down, and you're going to have to do something. But most of the squalls are 35, sometimes 50 knots. You can go along and look, it's good to preempt um, the weather. So if you see something coming, you're oh, a better reef. But if you don't and you're inexperienced, it's okay because what the monohull does is it leans over. So I should do it in here so you can see it. So the wind's coming and you lean. Now, what happens is when you lean, the aspect ratio of the sail against the wind decreases. So there's less force on the sail. So it's an automatic release, a pressure release, automatically. You don't have to do a damn thing. So that's safety. And then here's another thing. Now, you could also be a bit Johnny on the spot and jump the main a bit. But even if you didn't, monohulls have this tendency to then round up. 
to feather into the wing because the mainsail is quite big. So then it um, changes the aspect to the wind some more. So there's even less wind on your boat, so even less uh, problems. So you don't really need to be paying attention. You ought to be. But if you've got, if you're anxious about, oh, will I get the sail down in time? Oh, can I reef it? Oh, it's got this automatic pressure release for you. So if that's the inexperienced thing and safety is an issue, just go manaha. I tell you what, I was hit in my long reef with a few squalls and um, at night when I couldn't see them <coughs> because that's a problem. Um, the boat doesn't really lean because they're a catamaran. It leans a bit, but it requires an immense amount of force to get it to go over. The boat just goes faster and faster and faster and it skips off waves and it's, it's scary. And if it's at night and there's waves crashing over, you've got to dump the main, you've got to reef it, you've got to do things quite quickly. So with catamarans, the, the issue is you always got to be looking around and being aware. You've got radar, you might be able to see a squall coming or you see that the stars are getting blotted out on the horizon so you watch it and you, you, you see if it's coming your way. You've got to be aware. So I was always aware and it's tiring. I'm on a whole year. Well, you shouldn't, but, you know, you, it, it's not imperative because uh, it's got the fail safe, it's got the pressure release. So it's a wonderful thing. So you don't have to be scared at all. So what was I going to say? Um, with catamarans, if, you think, if you're thinking about reefing, you should have already reefed. So you need to really reef early. And in that way, you're sort of decreasing the uh, performance of the cat or the, you know, the, the safety aspect of getting to a destination quicker because you always have to undersail it to be safe. So eh, I hope you get the idea. Catamaran's a bit more anxious. You've got to have, be a bit more skillful, especially in storms, of course. So in monohulls, you can get away with it. So I hope that gives you a bit of relief when you say, oh, well, I don't know anything about sailing. Will I botch it up and lean over and fall in the water and I'll drown and I'll drown my partner? No, you won't. It'll just simply lean, round up, and then you dump, well, you hopefully would have dumped, dumped your mane a bit, and uh, then you reef. It's easy. It really is easy. Um, let me consult my guide here. Uh, Wow, I went through the whole list and I didn't even um, look at it. There you go, that's preparation, people. Preparation prevents piss poor performance. I wonder if, I thought that was an Australian military saying, but maybe it's um, around the world. Uh, I'll get this right. Who's heard of the 1979 Fastnet race? So you're scared, you're in a huge storm. Go look at the statistics of that. I, I, um, I read this many years ago. I didn't research it today because the internet went out because the power went out. Because the, This hotel is a bit like a big boat. It's got water collection, it's got solar power, and it's got a huge battery bank. But I'm, I suspect there's a few batteries that have problems and it's draining all the others. When the battery gets down, it goes down, we lose power and I lost the internet. So I couldn't research. But research yourself. Boats were abandoned, right? Little tiny boats in this huge storm. What well, didn't last that long, but it was huge. And they found the boats. I think a huge amount of the boats were still floating and there was no one on there doing anything. But that's how good monohulls are. I don't think there was many catamarans in there. I, you can look it up yourself. But that's how safe it is. So you could just sit back and do nothing and the odds are you will survive a storm. I don't recommend it. You should always be doing something. You should always be experimenting. Shall I heave to? Shall I heave to and forage? Or shall I do this? Or shall I heave to with a small drogue? Or shall I uh, run before the wind with some drogues? You should be always doing it and you'll work out, oh, uh, in this situation, I'll do this or I'll do this. But there you go. There was a huge amount of boats huge percentage of boats that survived and there was no one on them. That's how safe it is, They're like a cork, they just float.
Uh, some were full of water, but that's okay. You can have a bath as well. All right. Um, oh, um, heaving two. Heaving two is a wonderful thing. How do I explain heaving two to people? Oh, sorry, you got other things. How do I explain heaving two? Heaving two is when you, um, let's say you're sailing on this tack, wind's coming this way, and you throw your staysail or your jib onto the other side. And so what happens is your mainsail's trying to drive into the wind and your staysail or your jib is trying to throw you back off the wind. And there's a balance. And you can slow the boat right down. And what happens if you've got a bit of a keel, then the keel creates a slick, which is a whole bunch of vortices, and it's actually called the Van Carmen Vortex Street. And this is a bunch of tiny little, um, you know, vortices that go up to windward. Now, it doesn't necessarily go to windward. You need to adjust the size of your main and how much sheet of main you've got on to get the slick to windward, because what you do want is it going to windward. And if it's to windward, apparently, any waves threatening your boat will crash into the slick before they hit your boat and they become harmless. With monohulls, it's much easier to heave to with a slick, and you do get a slick with a monohull, than a catamaran. I uh, have heaved to on uh, long reef, but there's a lot of leeway. Even though I stuck a dagger board in to claw, like on the windward side, you put a dagger board to claw and to stop yourself, you're still going uh, at probably twice the speed of monohull. And because the dagger board is like tiny, there's no real slick and the hulls like more or less slide along the top of the water. So you don't really get that protective slick. So that's another safety issue about a monohull. So you don't really have to anxi have anxiety. Oh, and, and the thing about heaving too, apart from having a watch out for boats or rocks or islands or whatever, you can relax. The boat's not slamming and bang, 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 bang. You're relaxed. So if you're going, oh, I'm having a tough time, I don't think I can go on. You heave to and you sit back and relax. Hopefully you've got someone else on watch so they can keep an eye out and you can go to sleep. And it's actually quite comfortable. I did it several times on the trip. Um, well, I did it outside Haiti and I did it outside another, I think that's in an episode coming, so I better not say anything. Um, it's another safety thing. So... Don't have anxiety about getting into sailing if you know nothing about it. There's some techniques where it is safe. Okay, what have we got here? Love a bath, yes, top stuff. Anything else? Monos have more slick. Yes, they do have more slick. That's what I was explaining. Catamarans uh, do not, even with dagger board. Um, yes. Okay, what are, oh, wrong page, people. Uh, comfort. Well, this is pretty obvious. I mean, I don't know anything about this <laughs> I mean I could have I don't know if you remember long reef but there was a counter above the the, um, the galley I was going to say kitchen then uh, I could have put a full glass of water on that and I reckon it would have stayed there without tipping over except for one occasion uh, they're just stable uh, it's it's very it's easier to sleep um, there is a hobby horse motion that some people find irritating. Uh, Margarita is a cat person. She loves the, the comfort of the catamaran. She did the Gulf Carpentaria for three days. We were a bit slack, we were a bit slow because um, we lost our um, Jenica. It blew out. And so I had to do it on the, 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 the jib. And um, so it was slow. And she did three days, didn't get seasick at all, and was fine, cooked, no drama. So the comfort there. Uh, on catamarans is it's pretty obvious okay um monos obviously can be on leans and it's can be rolly if you're in a following sea so but i think that's pretty obvious um here's something that i haven't seen before i did a bit of research and looked at some other um of the competitors um and um Haul out. Now, people go, oh, yeah, but hauling out catamarans is so expensive. You've got to go to a special, I think, uh, you've got to go to a special um, travel lift and it's got to be wide enough and then you've got more space and, oh, yeah, it's expensive. And so, in 10 years that I owned Long Reef, I only took it out of the water twice. Every year that I had to anti-foul, 
there was a beach in a bay in Sydney. This is in the middle of Sydney. I would beach it on full moon or no moon where the tides were big. I'd send out three anchors, four and quarters. So I'd fix the boat. And if I was really professional in the end, I uh, bought sandbags, sandbags on the internet for like 40 cents each. You'll need 12 or 18 sandbags. And you set the boat up, you set the sandbags as the boat goes down as the tide drops, drops onto the uh, sandbags, do a quick wash with um, what's in the tank um, of water on the hulls, lightly abrade it, put out tarps and do your anti-fouling. I took the boat out once every five years. You save a hell of a lot of money and it's, it's only one day operation. Everyone else that goes to a hard stand, it's a long weekend operation because they bring it out one day, then they get the guys with the, the um, blasters on the, either the beginning of the next day or that day. Then you gotta do, it's a, it's a long weekend. I used to get it done in one day. And that is a huge saving. And, and uh, Long Reef did not have mini keels. It just sat on, you know, sandbags for, when I did it to begin with, I just had it sat on, uh, sit on the sand. Yes, there is a small part where you can't any foul. Well, you just dive in and you scrape it off every few weeks and it takes you 30 seconds. So you can save a lot. And I know lots of cat people, they know all the beaches all the way up and down the east coast of Australia where they can do it. Because yes, it's preferable not to do it in Sydney uh, or um, heavily uh, populated areas because I remember when I was doing it once, a guy that lived there didn't appreciate the fact that I was bringing the big cat up and supposedly polluting the water. But I'd lay down the tarp, he'd come out with a camera and he'd stand there for four hours trying to get me dropping a bit of anti-foul, bottom paint for people that don't know what anti-foul is, on the sand. I mean, I don't really know the big deal anyway because I'm putting on the boat which dries, which ablates, which goes into the water anyway and in the sand. So. I'm really cutting out the middleman, but I used to put the tarps down and he used to film, or well, he filmed once, and um, it was quite funny. Anyway, I had a good productive day. I am not sure that he did, because he didn't catch me. Um, okay, so you can save money. Oh, someone, someone, Kevin Hollingsworth. I think Kevin Hollingsworth was my very, very first uh, patron. Is that... Can you confirm that, Kevin? Are you the very, very first one? Um, it was $3.50, I remember. And I remember when I did get that um, from, I thought it was Mr. Hollingsworth. I was surprised. I thought, Jesus, someone wants to pay to watch this channel. And I'm getting $3.50. And in those days, $3.50, uh, I don't know if people remember those series, but we were living on less than $5 a day with the Italians. In fact, it was like, I can't remember, but it was very, very low. And we were still eating well. And, you know, Italians, they can be uh, quite fiery and you need to keep them happy. And so we did well to keep them happy two whole months, more than two months, at less than $5 a day feeding them. So I was very appreciative of the first $3.50 that I got. And um, is, is that true, Kevin? Do you want to confirm that you're the very, very first patron? I'm not sure. Anyway... Kevin's not paying attention, but thank you very much. Uh, I, he says, appreciate us guys. Well, I appreciate that, but um, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, tacking. My boat, Long Reef, was a beamy catamaran, and it was a bugger to tack. When I first started trying to tack in it, I don't think I got many. I would have to try and do a reverse park. I don't know if you know what a reverse park is, but you have to throw the rudders on the other side to get the bow around. And then as soon as you, you had to judge it right and wait for the wind to fill in the main, and then as soon as right, then you had to quickly turn the wheel because otherwise it'd round up and go into irons again. It's quite a technique. And you know, to tack maybe once, it would take me maybe 20 minutes at the start. And I, it was annoying. Having said that, I know a guy <laughs> that sailed around the world and he never, in a catamaran, and it was a beanie catamaran, and it was a crowd of catamaran too. He never ever tacked unless he had one of the motors on. So there you go. It is a pain in the ass. 
Uh, even when I had sailed it for quite a while, I would still botch up 35% of the tacks and have to do them again or do the reverse part. You really have to pay attention to the swell and because you'll need that to kick you around. So it's a pain in the ass. With a monohull, Jesus, if you can't tack, there's something wrong with you. I mean, you don't even need that much speed. I don't think I've botched a single one in this monohull. It's very easy. So that's another thing. Easy to tack. So if you're in a situation, it's easier with a monohull. Uh, Maneuverability. Um, okay. So if you're going into marinas, uh, two-motor cat is easy. It's like a tank. You know, you can literally get it in anywhere. There's really no danger. Unless there's a gust. Um, I was coming up to a fuel wharf in uh, Newport and there was this huge super yacht. I think it even had a little helicopter on it. The helicopter wasn't there that day, so I think the boss was flying, which is a good thing. And I came up and I was going sweet. He, he took up most of the bloody fuel dock. It's his fault, people. And I was coming along and a gust came and it literally, I could see the boat, the leeway. We just went whew, two metres. I just missed the super yacht. I reckon if I put a, um, a scratch in it, I would have just had to hand over the keys because that scratch would have been worth more than the boat. Uh, so you've got to bear in mind that um, I didn't have the dagger boards. I didn't think there was anything, uh, any squall was going to be. Um, but that's what happens when you're in the bay and pit water. You get things coming over the mountain sometimes. Um, so normally a catamaran is very manoeuvrable to get into a marina. I didn't really have much anxiety. But I tell you what, bringing this boat into a marina with all these expensive boats that never go anywhere, um, oh, this boat with a 30 horsepower, uh, I mean, we're underpowered. Um, it's very difficult to steer this boat. Um, so it's difficult to manoeuvre. So that's a thing. That's why, well, not, that's not why I don't like going to marinas. I just don't like going to marinas. I like to be out in the sticks, um, but I certainly don't like going to marinas. And I definitely get uh, anxious. Um, so what do we got here? So we're, we're almost at the end, people. How many minutes are we going? We've got 338 people. I thought if you took off 300, that's how many. Because we do, I do know we have 200 very, very special patrons. Thank you, people. For joining uh, and being patrons, we had some real issues in January. That's with the beer ads. People went, oh, Jesus, get rid of the beer ads and I'll become a patron already. Jesus. Um, and we doubled our patrons and we actually can survive. So well done to the patrons. And I do know there's 38 other people besides the 202 patrons that we've got who like the channel. So top stuff. Um, I think all the other people are watching because they think I might wreck another boat. I hope not. I don't want to wreck another one. Once can be regarded as misfortune, but twice would be carelessness. All right. Uh, security. Cats are wide open. I mean, anyone can get on them. You could swim up and get onto them. You swim up to my boat, you'll break a leg before you get on. I pity the poor pirate to get on my boat. He'll break something. It'll get cut because there's bits of bolts and things hanging out because there's still lots of things to repair on it because um, we've got what we call arsehole bolts. I didn't know what an arsehole bolt until uh, Tim, the guy that made the davits. Hi, Tim. Hope you're watching. Um, uh, he called call these things arsehole bolts. Arsehole bolts are just bolts that are mismatched all over the place. Well, that's what this boat's got. Handy little got sharp things on it. Yes, pity the poor pirate that tries to get on our boat. He will probably die before he gets to threaten us. Um, so cats are wide open. So if you didn't get a cat, I wouldn't, you know, a lot of people get these security lights that are triggered by motion sensors. I don't know if that's such a good idea. Like, you make up your own mind. But if a guy, a bad person, decides to rob, and he needs to rob because he's in a dire situation, because COVID's terrible, everyone's starving and... People have got to feed their family somehow. Um, not that they should rob, but I can understand why they do it. Um, if they're going to come on the boat and then there's suddenly a light and they're, already, they're on the boat, they're doing this, well, might that not trigger them to go quickly and with their gun try to solve the problem quickly and get all the money? And go? So I reckon the best thing to do is have a motion sensor that triggers a little cricket in your room next to your ear where you sleep. So you go, and you know someone's there. 
So you don't put all the lights on. You get yourself ready in 20 seconds because you know he's starting to get on the boat or he's already on the boat. And then all of a sudden you got a button, obviously, that turns on everything with a massive horn and all the lights and the... And you've got a gun or a spear gun or something. It's going to scare the shit out of him. And you're prepared and he's never going to come back again. And he probably join the church after that because that's God way, God's way of telling him he ought not be bad. So uh, that's what I would do. Uh, but I know a lot of people have the security lights. That's just my two cents worth. Um, so monohulls, it's harder to get on board. Um, chickability. What is chickability, people? Well, chickability is the ability to get chicks on board. And yes, it does go to Captain Jack. But I think he knew that. I just put that in with fun at the end um all right that's about it uh now i'm sorry i didn't get to read the comments uh, i read a couple um uh, but uh yeah you know me i'm a guy and i can't do more than two things at once so i can read a few now uh, okay you you guys seem to be all happy amongst talking amongst yourselves well, that's good you know what I appreciate the most about having such wonderful friends? Because you all, all are friends, uh, whether you're 240 of you or there's a few more. Um, you know, you get these trolls and they say bad things and they say this and they say that. Before I even get to comment on the troll, which I usually try to make it witty or something or try to have a go at the back, once there was 34 comments from you guys sticking it to them. I didn't have to do anything. So good on you, people. So these trolls, I mean, they don't realise that they're actually helping the channel along because people like having pride. And um, no doubt you like sailing into, some of you like sailing into freedom and uh, you want to defend that because you want to keep us going and stuff and you don't like thing, people having a go at us. Um, and you defend it, and that actually creates some pride. So um, it actually makes the channel stronger. So good on you, trolls. Uh, you provide a service, so keep it up, and you guys keep it up, slinging it back to them because they're a bunch of pack of bastards. There you go. Now, um, so did we? Who enjoyed this? All three hundred of you. Uh, this one-on-one -on -one with. This guy without the smiling margarita, it wasn't too bad. I know I didn't think I was going to get to a 1,000. I thought I was going to get to 38. I told you that. Nothing but quality indeed. I'll bash the trolls. Yes, uh, Seward Bjorn, you might be from a Nordic country, I think. And yes, it's probably in your past. You probably had these long ships with oars and axes, battle axes and stuff. Keep up the good work, Seward Bjorn. Top stuff. Uh, a bit of housekeeping. I can't remember if I told you uh, before, but the vlog is saved. Oh, uh, it's uh, amazing. Um, I really thought in February, March, April, May, when we didn't have any internet at all, at all, because in Cuba you couldn't check um, any numbers or anything, or earnings or anything. And so when I saw the numbers dropping off a cliff, I could have just assumed that it was <laughs> going to the bottom. And then all of a sudden it went good. Look at that. You have to hit rock board at bottom before you can come good. So we're all good. Um, but, however, I do suspect something's going to happen. I, I, I want to explain. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try and explain this. I don't know if this is true, but this is just basic statistical analysis. I noticed with these recent videos, because we've never had so many views before ever, but as soon as you hit 70,000 views on something, it starts to climb up again. I think at that point, the algorithm starts favouring you and starts recommending you to people that are surfing the net. So 70,000 is, to me, the magic number. So in order to get us to see 70,000 views all the time for us to grow, otherwise I'm pretty sure we probably won't go back to 12,000 views per episode. Um, it might be like 15,000 per episode. But for, for us to get 70,000 views, yes, I have to be less shit. Yes, I understand that. There's probably some comments on that. And we are trying. I'm putting in lots of effort. 
Uh, yet, but there is a problem basically with the blog. Yes, we could just be inherently SHIG. Sorry for you, the swear word if there's any kiddies watching. Uh, Uncle Plucky uh, doesn't swear that much. Uh, yes. Anyway, um, 70,000 is the key. So for us to get 70,000 views, I reckon our magic number is 140,000 subscribers. So I'm going to ask you a favour. I know some people have donated. Thank you very much. That's I'm a bloody trooper, mate. Well, you're a bloody trooper too, mate. I'm going to ask you a favour. I don't know the wisdom in this. I haven't really thought it out. I didn't pass it past uh, Margarita because uh, she usually uh, is much wiser than me. But we need to somehow promote this channel if you want it to keep going. Because I reckon if we get 70,000 views, it's it's okay. We'll, we'll definitely be okay. But I reckon after this coronavirus series, we're going to be back in the toilet. Um, but that's okay. Maybe we deserve to be in the toilet. But if you can, no doubt you watch other sailing vlogs. Try and make comments and say, Ah, oh, you need, this is a good episode. Good on you, whoever they are. Good on you, Sailing Nahoa. But have you, guys out there, have you seen Sailing Into Freedom? They are awesome. Yes, that's right, people. I want you to lie and lie through your teeth. Uh, well, you don't have to lie too much, but try and promote it a bit and say, yeah, she's that. Now, try not to copy the link across because then that goes to their withheld comments and they will probably go, well, I don't want to give anything to the competition. And they'll probably bin it. So just write Sailing Into Freedom. Don't copy the link and say, hey, anyone uh, like this, you would like Sailing Into Freedom episode 25 or this or that. So if you can, that would be the greatest help ever. Don't donate. Try and do that because the donations will probably come. And as I said, we're doing okay. We're in a flashy hotel, and I can sit down on the toilet, would you believe? I don't have to hang my bum in the air conditioning outside. So it's all good for me. Uh, oh, it's all good for me. And as I say, it's all good, and I'm not dead, so it's all good from that. So if you can, promote it as much as you can. Your friends, family, other sailing vlogs, I think, is probably they're probably going to hate it, and they're going to go, sailing in freedom, oh, we hate these guys, they're a bunch of dicks or something. Uh, and yes, but, well, we're going to survive somehow. Anyway, do what you can, and we would be greatly appreciated. And we'll keep on making videos. Uh, I think that's about it, people. I can answer some questions. Or it's, Oh, we're starting to lose views. We're at 330. I think we've got 340. Now we're starting to drop. Um, gee, there's... $325 of revenue. What part of the you don't have to donate, people, uh, didn't you get? I mean, it's wonderful. Thank you very much. I better try and how do I scroll through this to find out who donated so I can do a shout out. Oh, I can do this. Oh, look at this. I'm technologically retarded, people. I'm sorry. Um, well, look, to those, I, I, I'll, I'll ask. Oh, Retap Akrat. You're a bloody trooper, mate. Well, you're a bloody trooper. Thank you very much, uh, Retap Atcrack. Jose Galvez. Woohoo! Good on you. Mark Maxwell. Top stuff. Fouad Mefle. Where are you from, Fouad Mefle? Good on you. That sounds a bit. Mad Sam. California, is it? Kevin Hollingsworth, we already did that. Is he confirmed if he's. Um, did he, he did it twice, did he? Hey, Kevin, you might have made a mistake. If you donated twice, send me a message and I'll send it back. Because um, I don't want to be a party to that. That would be too much. Um, all right, Richard Sprout, Patrick Leclerc. Oh, good on you, Patrick. You didn't do that because I said you have a wonderful relationship and your wife is wonderful, did you? I'm not trying to get another $20. Thank you, Patrick. Good on you. Uh, look, to all those people... Uh, Calvin, thank you very much, Calvin. Does anyone have any... Okay, I'm at the start, so I've thanked everyone, I think. Anyone have any uh, questions that... Um, I'll let, put a paper in your description. Okay. Sticking in his PayPal, Google, okay. 
Stop trying to discourage people from giving. Yes, Clay, the trouble is all I see is these poor Indians here, they can't make a buck at all. They're literally starving. Um, we buy fish for them just to give them some money. They eat their fish. This collateral damage from this COVID-19, I don't know too much about this COVID-19. I'm going to have to do some research. Is there an independent medical association that is not funded by anyone that's going to give the truth? That's what I want to know. We should be listening to them. None of this other garbage that the governments throw at us because governments are usually less than honest and are more self-interest. Um, the collateral damage must be 15 to 20% of the world uh, and they're starving and divorcing and kids are getting abused. That's a bigger problem, I think. But anyway, um, oh, starting to lose views, gone into politics. Yep. No worries. Um, okay, people, um, did you find anyone to do the crossing with you? Uh, original Budster? No, uh, I haven't. Uh, I've had a few. I'm looking at those few that are coming through. But we've got plenty of time. And I must tell the, 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 the truth here. Uh, I should always tell the truth. Um, I have been madly working on that video that I tried to get released today. I'm sorry about the problems, but Adobe really gave it to me. Um, you wouldn't believe the problems that I have uh, with the computers. Oh. Uh, so I'm sorry about that, and I'm sorry to my patrons. I know you're one episode ahead, but you also deserve to be rewarded, and I couldn't even get that one out, which, which is the one I was working on. Uh, and then I was working on this uh, thing. So, look, I hope you have had a little bit on this. Do research. Get on boats yourself. Get on catamarans. Get on monohulls. Work it out for yourself. But if money's an issue, just go for monohull. If anxiety is an issue and, and lack of experience, get a monohull and you will be out there and you'll be doing exactly the same things, if not even more so than the flashy catamarans and the flashy big monohulls because they're so petrified of wrecking their boats and scratching them. You can get into tight little reefs and you can have an awesome time, just like we did um, in the coronavirus. So good on you, people. We go back to 311. Um, I think we've probably talked enough. I don't know where the time is. This is all complicated for me. Um, top stuff. So if you can, inundate the other channels, piss them off a bit. You know, they are public. They ought to be pissed a little bit. That's okay. I'm sure they've advertised on my one as well. Um, I'm sure I didn't block them. I'm sure I just left them. Uh, so do what you can and this blog will grow and we will continue making videos and, um, and hopefully livening up your Friday and keeping the dream alive and getting you on a boat and having a better life. All right, this is me signing off. Next time I promise Marguerite will be here and she will have that wonderful smiling face. So I bid you good night, have a good weekend, stay safe and I'll see you next time.